Hey guys, <clears throat> it's Friday Finds. Today I'm going to be talking about the new design frontier um, by Envision, which is a report examining design's impact on business. So I'm sporting my Envision socks, these beautiful pink socks that are my feature. Uh, yeah, they were a little gift from Envision last year and uh, I thought they were appropriate to wear today to discuss their design report. I mean, for anybody who doesn't know, Envision are, I think, originally a prototyping tool. They've realized that prototyping wasn't enough and they've expanded and built a whole suite of complementary tools, everything from a design system, an app called Studio, which is a design app for, for UI, and it seems to be progressing quite rapidly and uh, hopefully will be quite competitive against the likes of Sketch and uh, Adobe XD and Figma and apps like that. So yeah, they, they've got this whole ecosystem, I think, I'm trying to think what else they've got. They've got this board, I can't remember what it's called, I don't know, my brain's... <coughs> seem to have forgotten they are certainly like making a good go of being the software or the application to use during the design process and really integrated things well you know the, the handoff of files is easier the integration even with things like figma and sketch i think is is um still quite um useful so it's not like you can't use as other um apps which I think are possibly better but yeah I, I I think they're doing a great job they've got a great attitude they've been hiring like crazy and really really talented um, designers I think Stephen Gates is there and Pablo I can't remember his surname but he's there the sketch with us guy or sketch together guy or whatever he's awesome and um, yeah they really seem to be like doing amazing work and I mean I'd be super proud of their efforts because they've kind of come out of nowhere. They made this amazing documentary a few years ago, which is called Design Disruptors, which, you know, I'm really glad they did because they seem to really change how people perceive design and, and the value of design. And I think this latest report is something worth looking into. So it's a PDF. I'll put a link down below where you can find it. But I thought I would just kind of add my commentary as I go through this PDF and maybe just talk around some of the things that they discuss. I think I did contribute to the survey, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I think they got like 2,200 um, people, give or take, that contributed, which I think, you know, I think these are the existing customers. Um, other people that have signed up for products and the tutorials and things like that I assume so it is within their or ecosystem so it's not completely like random out there and you know if you think of how McKinsey and people like that do do surveys they do on like an average I think like 300 people I think that's a sweet spot that I was actually once told is that like a any sort of real research needs to be about 300 people well they've done over 2,000 and I think that's pretty impressive so credit to them for reaching out and, and getting you know people involved from their own staff in the community and uh, hopefully a few outsiders so that there's some objective uh, opinions but yeah I would love to go through this and I hope you'll enjoy um, going through this with me let's do this all right so They've got this division, I think, in Design Better by Envision. Anyway, okay. So they've gone to this like whole space theme, um, which is kind of nice. I guess it's future and the whole thing, uh, you know, illustrations, hot. I've said this. There's a big trend right now. 
So, you know, they would have traditionally maybe used some stock photography. They've gone to this whole space theme and it's cute. It, it does the job. Um, you know, they've, they've used things like they've gone explore the astronomical impact design has on business. And I get it. Like the whole thing is all kind of spacey and so on. I get what they're doing. But yeah, what I don't get, and for anybody who goes through this, you'll notice they've got this like half circle. I don't get that. That I certainly don't get. I don't know what they're doing. Um, yeah. I don't know. Is it a, is it a moon? Is it a D for design? It's just randomly placed all over the place. I'm not really understanding what kind of the purpose is. But anyway, let's let's get back to the report. So let's go. They got some sort of a kind of I don't know, is it a menu? Is it a glossary? Is it a table of contents? There you go. Um, Talks about the the survey, the analysis, the maturity model, maturity by industry, conclusion, appendix, blah blah, fish paste. Okay, unearthing the insights. <laughs> they really have kept this on like very much on theme, eh? the whole space and earth and the whole thing. So they just talk about what they did and how they got there and and things like that. Um, you know, they, they basically, they've said you're cool, the largest design maturity studies, 2.2, or two, how do Americans say it? 2,200, 2,200 companies. Um, and they've kind of broken it up. And, and so they've shown here yeah, that there's like 1% government, 2% nonprofit, 25% agency. I must say that I thought would be higher, but I suppose given that, the agencies kind of probably don't even use this software because they don't really offer this. There's not that many agencies that offer product design and thinking in this way. They're still trying to service and produce. So that could be a thing. Uh, okay, wait. I think my MacBook is screaming a bit and I don't want that to get picked up on the mic. So let me see if I can try and... Get it away from the mic and if it will make any difference. We don't really need it. Uh, maybe I should just, yeah, okay. Um, so yeah, then they've pointed out that 71% of the people that they spoke to were enterprises. And that's, I think, a really good sign because it shows that like business is taking design seriously and that there are designers and, and these tools at least being used in, in these things. They've then pointed out that 77 countries were surveyed and I'm very proud to see that South Africa has such a big footprint at the bottom of Africa and that there are some other African countries that were included. There are, I mean, the biggest pink gap there happens to be the continent of Africa, which, you know, is really huge. And it just shows that, you know, people just aren't kind of doing this sort of work there. And it's a pity. Okay. So I've used quotes by like Neil Armstrong on that. Research is creating new knowledge. Yeah. It's just explained. Well, Stephen Hawking's here. Intelligence is the ability to adapt to change. Mm. Rocket powered results. I don't know. Okay. So they've, they've got this page here that says up. Our design team has had proven impact on product usability, 81%, customer satisfaction, 71%, operational efficiency, so I suppose integrating their tools, 33%, and time to market, 29%. Okay. 
business see they they are measuring like business profitability revenue conversion funnel metrics i mean that seems low 35 percent like conversion i think then they're using the tools wrong you know like how's anybody measuring tv as a conversion where's like building like products in the digital sphere you can track almost everything and to think like only 20 35 uh, percent are converting so it's you know it's like it's over one third i don't know it's interesting uh cost savings does reduce costs but i don't necessarily think you always have to reduce costs what i do believe is you can maybe keep similar costs but focus effort elsewhere so you can reduce the amount of time it takes to design things for example like the same repetitive tasks and development and then at the same time you can then put more effort into improving things so ultimately while you might not have saved money you've increased the experience which, which would increase profitability so and then market positioned brand equity, of course, you know, keeping brands consistent. I spoke about this the other day, that the brand is a center of, of um, you know, your design projects, you know, you've got to keep things on brand, consistency is key. So that would then be favored by uh, the market because they would kind of recognize your brand and be comfortable to use your brand and things like that. So of course, they'll any reports will go, oh yeah, this brand here has been doing really great work because everything has been consistent and things like that. Okay, entry into new markets, design patents. Okay, I don't know, some of the stuff's over my head. Okay. Okay, so big thing is adoption. I get that. Um, you know, I think they, I don't necessarily think they're talking about their software. I think they're talking about design. You know, is this something that's adopted by an organization? And when you start going through like the maturity levels, you get to see what they define as real adoption in organizations. I think one of the crucial kind of things is, is seeing companies like Uber who are design-led companies and you know the entire business i think the founders are designers if i understand correctly so i really i really do see kind of how having design like right up as the driving force behind a business can make a really big impact i think the maturity level before we even go into it um, based on how I understand adoption is probably lower than people think it is. But yeah, let's go through it. Okay. So they've got things like design is well integrated into the product development process. Design shares priorities and goals with key partners. You know, design sits together with key partners. It's one of those things that I'm still like not entirely sure I believe in. Design leaders are peers with product management and engineering leaders. Well, they try to be. Design has joint working sessions with key partners. Of course they do, well, you know. They, they've kept post-its in business. Employees participate in design process. No, only because they have to. Executives get personally involved in design process. Okay, but personally involved, when <laughs> they would call me when design wasn't going their way. So if that's personally involved, then sure. But the most I really saw executives was around big tables where they all nodded and approved. But I didn't see them day to day really trying to appreciate and understand the design outside of a kind of courtesy visit okay employees participate in 
use a customer research. Okay, so I'm not understanding this because one of the big things that I probably dislike most is how <laughs> UX is going to do testing and they go and they test on staff. And you go, wait a minute, there's got to be a bit of a bias in that. Like, shouldn't be, you're making something for the customer, go test it with the customer. Now I get, staff might have some insights, great. But that's it. But when they say that it should be employees participate in using the customer research, shouldn't it be that employees, you know, do research with customers? not just UX people, because UX people have got a very specific agenda that they're trying to achieve when they are testing with customers. Shouldn't people in branch be like keeping an eye for things, doing surveys, giving feedback, customer feedback, that sort of stuff. Call centers should be giving feedback. And that would be like customer research. You know, asking questions. You know, I think in the US, they've got a beautiful kind of thing of the you know you pay and whatever and they go hey you know like you can get a discount on this or you could be entered into that competition or whatever could you just go fill out that uh, survey and they would have a little iPad on the side and you can go and fill that in quickly he's got three to five questions and uh, I think you know that's a great approach to how you do this Yeah, they've got this a very like weird charger where they've got like level five, which are the visionaries, the 5% of companies. And I'd say it's probably lower because I don't think there's that many Ubers and Airbnbs and, and things like that. I know it seems like they are, but given all the other companies out there in the world, you know, these are the same names that come up over and over again. So I'm not convinced, but Okay, let's, let's go. The next, the scientists, and they do give the definitions for these. Level four is a scientist, 12% of companies. Level three is the architects. And that's 21% of companies. And I think that's probably the maturity that I've most experienced. And even in the consultancies, it's kind of where they're at. Level two are the connectors and level one are the producers. And we'll have to go through how they define each one of those before we can actually start looking at the results. Okay. Okay, so they've, they've looked at what the impact the design team has had on the following things. So revenue is up like four times from 22% to 92%. Cost savings, five times. I mean, I still don't get this cost saving thing, but I get it. Okay, so to anybody who's not in a big corporation or in a company, I'll tell you a few of the really, really big costs for any um, organization. The first thing is people. People cost money. Um, their salaries are high, bonuses are required, all these things. And it's very hard to like, once somebody's earned something to then backtrack. It's very hard to reduce that cost. You have to reduce, the way you reduce that cost is you get rid of people. So just think about that. You actually gotta get rid of people. And quite often you see these banks that got 3,000 people were let go today. Well, I think if they were honest with themselves, they could release a lot more because um, there are definitely a lot of people doing very little. So when it comes to cost savings, people are the best cost savings. Then the next thing is infrastructure. So floor space, desk space, chairs, tea, coffee, security, blinds, plants. These have huge costs for companies. And if you think about like I'm going to use the banks because that's the industry that I've mostly been in. They have all these branches that they don't really need anymore. And, and I'm not saying that we need a branchless world because there always seems to be a time where sometimes you just can't get your head around something and you just need to talk to a human. 
and face to face because also customers sitting on the phone can be very frustrating. But um, yeah, uh, I definitely think that like they could close a lot more banks, like a, a br branches of banks. So definitely something that would be a cost saving. You know, I don't think that design itself is a cost saver as it, it certainly can create some e efficiency and I think products that you create could cost save but the truth is you know I don't think anybody does anything that well if they're honest like people are just doing better so is you know, like they're doing better than where they were, but very rarely are people doing something that is exceptional. And the reason for that is that they're trying to cut the costs, which means they cut the costs everywhere. And so while there could be a saving from saying, cool, we do design now, and therefore the thinking is kind of better for where business is at now and given their product, I believe is the core of which you build your your business these days then sure I, I kind of get that but I would rather say don't reduce your costs producing a product I would say reduce your costs because you don't need certain people and certain tasks are now being fulfilled by your product but rather put the money into doing better stuff that really makes customers go, wow, how amazing is this experience? Not, oh, well, it's better than it used to be. I don't really like that. That's not an approach that I appreciate. Okay, time to market. Okay, so that's an interesting one because it's often the biggest problem is going to market and that's because there's so many things that are misunderstood and their software certainly helps because if you can build a design library and, and if you can reuse assets and things like that, then it just makes the whole process quicker. But unfortunately, the organizations are a little bit slow. But if I have to think about how fast they released websites and things like that years ago, honestly, they used to drag their feet. They would, you know, sites would be done by agencies and the agencies would take forever to do anything. So. Yeah, I suppose time to market definitely increased. And they said that it's like six times, eh? that's 64% increase. And then valuation. Okay, it's one of those terms I don't truly understand. Okay, so then they made a nice point here, which is biggest teams don't always shine brightest. And they like pose this question, how um, our company has approximately underscore how many designers and they've released the numbers you know level one which are the the largest audience they had an average of 30 people level two have 12 people level three have 54 now that's the type of organizations that i've experienced and then level four and five are like 13 and 15 respectively and those are your envisions and things like that. And you know, I've met some of these guys at different conferences and so on, and they don't have massive teams. I managed over 100 people in the design team, and it didn't mean the output was better. I would have probably achieved more with a crack like squad of just great diverse talent uh, rather than a really big team like I did have, which were really I'd say half the resources were just bums and seats keeping stakeholders happy. So that's definitely something that the level three companies should improve on. I would rather go and say put crack like design teams together and have several of those that can solve certain problems rather than trying to just put people everywhere so that everybody feels they have a designer in the room. Okay, so we're getting into the maturity model. Okay, so I don't know, they've got your, like, the visionaries design is business strategy. Okay, so like, I like that. That's a great way to look at it and go, Uber's business strategy, like, 
is it, it designs at the center of that. Then you've got level four, which says design is a hypothesis and an experiment, which means they, they kind of ideate and they test out things quite frequently. And, and that, like they're quite experimental, they've got a lab, they've probably got like stuff like that. And I think that's actually quite a good space. And I think definitely in the roadmap to getting to a visionary state, this makes perfect sense. Then level three is architects. Design is a standardized scalable process. So I get that. It's, it's something that I had to implement, which is going and saying, hey, right now your business is all over the place. We need to standardize things. We need some principles at which we adhere to. We need to have some consistency. We need to be on brand. And so we're going to build a system and everybody's going to work with that system. And I think, you know, that's where they're designed to. They've got a design system. They've got all that and, and Envision tools to help you with that. It's not the be all and end all though. It still doesn't mean that you are have a seat at the table nearly as much I had the seat at the table. I represented design. But it would have been nicer if I wasn't a guest at the table all the time and actually I had dinner at the table all the time and that I contributed to business ideas and thinking and, and coming from that product mindset in, in shaping where the business is going, not just the vision for how we could land it, but actually, you know, what is our business? And uh, how could we do things differently? Not, oh, well, we've got a budget for something because so-and-so liked an app that he saw and therefore we got a budget. And Anyway, then they've got like level two, which are the connectors. Design is what happens in a workshop. So that's very much the hackathons, the things like that, where, you know, people are in the possibly their squads and they're kind of doing stuff there. I'd say at this stage, people got a bit of a disconnected design, but people are contributing and other stakeholders possibly, but it's not like a standardized thing and not in a very systematic way, not very, op like not operationalized very well. So yeah, it's interesting. And then level one, the producers. So design is what happens on screens. And so that's very much like the, the pixel pushing stuff that like most agencies, this is where like I feel ad agencies are and, and design like digital agencies. They're, they're at this stage of like, design is a pretty things you show clients. And, and it's not to say that there isn't amazing stuff that comes out of that, but it's not like real thinking. It's not real problem solving. It's just pretty. And people understand that because that's what they've traditionally known forever. You know, so yeah. Okay, the next thing here is because we've got the producer's design just makes it look good. And they've got this graph here that says our design team has had proven impact on. Okay, and then they talk about productivity, customer satisfaction. And you can see it's got a very low maturity level in organizations. So I'm just trying to understand the colors in this graph. Is people, practices, and platforms. So the highest thing there is the practice of design, which is traditional um, software program delivered outputs. And then people, People that they've got here are key partners, executives, so key partners being agencies. And then design operations, I'm surprised to see that there as something, but okay. Executives and employees, design systems, strategy, user research, experimentation, UI design. I mean, that should like have its own color. And then design team, really are the, the design teams and agencies at that first thing connectors the workplace becomes a workshop workshops rapid sketching stakeholder input integrates between designer and developer tools I mean, this is when they say integrates it's like hands over pdf i'm sure i doubt it's integrating real software solutions there so this seems to be like more 
UI design, design team, key partners, whatever. There's less experimentation, less user research. A little bit of user research actually. Design system <coughs> in the infant stage. Okay, architects. Okay, so this is the one I know well. So this is these daily stand-ups, you know, got to do the whole agile thing, which again is not a design methodology. Um, planning and prioritization. Yes, there is planning and, and meetings and things like that. Design briefs. I must say, not in enterprise, hey? there's not as nearly as many design briefs. I think they have playbooks. But I mean, these are not put together by anybody who knows anything about design. Uh, written documentation, yeah. There's a lot of that, but... Um, okay, so let's look at this model. So that you can see that at this stage, in the snapshot, you know, there still isn't much experimentation. There's no lab. Surprised to you see no real strategy at this point. But there is usually, I'll be honest, we, we certainly, we had a, a great leader who definitely we would sit and strategize around, you know, how do we put out better product and things like that. We, we, there wasn't a lot is involvement is how to operationalize design in that. We had to think about that in the design team, but it wasn't something that was ever really talked about operationally. Um, we never had like a real strategy for like, how would we do this well? It was more get it done. We're del still delivery focused. So maybe that's it. User research is definitely up in those situations. But again, you know, you're testing on staff. I'm not sure. And, you know, testing on three to five people. Uh, uh, I think more credit is given where it is unnecessarily not benefiting okay so the scientists uh, they've got concept testing a b tests and analytics so they're doing a lot of testing they seem to be the ones who are like if we did this what do our results show us and so on and i must say i've met people like this who are the scientists and it, i wouldn't even say they can they come up with a lot of hypothesis but they certainly have the answer to everything is well let's test it Let's test it. You know, I've seen an infographic that went uh, birth, let's test it, death. These guys. But it is the correct path. You should be experimenting more and putting stuff out there more frequently. So in my world, you know, at the very least, have a lab, have a very exclusive, we are doing the version two of the design system or the UI or something like that. They're constantly a little bit ahead of where they actually are in market and things like that. Okay. And then, yeah, you can see here, I'm actually still surprised though. Why strategy nowhere? Something to focus on here. Eh? Really, I need to think about this. Um, yeah, I really do need to think about how are they... How does strategy come into design more? Maybe that's just a good career opportunity for some people to be a design strategist. I don't even know what that means actually, but I kind of get it. But Okay, so it looks like everything's starting to level out here. Everything seems to have like an equal weight with one another. Executives and employees buy into it. So do the key partners, which are your external agencies. You are design, experimentation, user research. These are all up. Just strategy seems a bit low. Okay, and then the visionaries, the Ubers and the likes. And um, these guys, you know, they're trend spotting and have foresight of where the industry is going. Uh, they have like product market, like fit test. So like, I think if I understand it correctly, is like it's in market. They've like A-B testing, like in the field without anybody even noticing. And they're trying new things. And they're like seeing, wow, we've got a great uplift from people who were notified that if they use their MasterCard on Uber, there's a discount. And, 
And we saw a huge lift there. So that's definitely something we should focus on. And wait a minute, when it rains, it impacts our business like this. So, you know, we've noticed that people don't order because we've got delivery bikes that do Uber Eats deliveries and, and they can't deliver in the rain. So I think it's like the real meat and potato like problems that are happening in the real world based on a real product that's out there and so on. Um, they also probably putting out stuff that like they are conceiving internally and then they're putting them out in the world and and I think there was like an uber like delivery service that wasn't food or whatever and I don't know what happened I think it's called like uber rush or something I don't know if that's happened overseas and I'd heard about it here but nothing I've never heard of anything but I mean that would be quite a visionary thing to go wait a minute this really challenges the delivery model of the Mr. Deliveries and take a lot and Amazon and, and you know even courier companies I mean I certainly there's times where it's like I just want somebody to go and I, and I want to send somebody flowers in Cape Town and I want someone to go past Giovanni's which is a delicatessen that has the most beautiful flowers outside I've always bought great flowers there but I'm in Joburg they're in Cape Town I want somebody to just drive past Giovanni's pick up um, some flowers and go drop them off for me and not a a flower company because they charge exorbitant prices that I don't want to pay so I would it's cheaper or more I would get better quality out of getting the uber guy to quickly go pick up the flowers and go drop it off like I want that so, and I think that's the type of thing that I think uber rush did and then they, they do have good cross-platform strategies according to this um, which means that they're really thinking about how they deliver uniquely on each platform, but still in a systematic way that, you know, doesn't eat into profit too much. So you're not over engineering and things like that, but you're still getting the reach. And this seems to now have this whole design strategy thing. And I think I, I might be able to get in on a Envision webinar or something. I think later today or, or sometime next week, and I am going to ask about this whole design strategy and I'll try and clarify for you guys. But yeah, it's interesting that like these companies have like the full matrix. They've got everything, including design strategy. Okay. Okay, so now they go into like maturity by industry. And I must say, I was quite surprised by this. So the industry that I know of to be of the highest... Um, kind of who who are that tier three that level well, that level three type of thing is the banking financial services and I think it is one of the highest. What is it? Banking sixteen percent. Uh, so they still have they still seem to have a lot of like tier one at forty six percent of which non profits also seem. And I'll tell you why. This is my theory anyway. So the reason why the nonprofits have got such a high and education have got such a high kind of traditional kind of design input where you've got pixel pushing and the whole thing. It's because a lot of designers are kind of tree hugging, especially the traditional ones. They're these tree hugging hippies who want to do good in the world. And I think like this is a great client. Agencies always go after the nonprofits and and things like that. It, it makes them look good to do you know st stuff for the wildlife fund and, and things like that. So I think that there's definitely so yeah, there's definitely a reason why the traditional stuff's there because most of these designers aren't more than just pixel pushers. And things like that and while they have great ideas i don't think they're doing things that people are doing in the product space which is a little bit different so the one that the leader here in terms of like level three 24 28 advertising and marketing okay i'm totally but maybe as the industry as a whole which is a pretty big industry of creatives that's why it's so hard but that doesn't make no sense to me because they seem so backwards when it comes to product, maybe it's including the digital agencies and maybe digital agencies to a certain degree are still the go-to people that these companies go to. I don't know. The 
place that's got like the level five, the visionaries, which I'm quite surprised by, is the transportation automotive and delivery. Well, not actually, so then I'm not that surprised because that's your Uber. That's your Tesla. That is your, possibly your Iran, so not, no, travel and leisure would be that. Did you think about it? You know, all these automation of things. That kind of makes sense. Um, who else is a big player? Let's see, the, the well, travel and leisure don't even have any placement. So that, which is strange because, I mean, come on, uh, Airbnb? They have to be like a level five visionary company. So maybe I'm missing something here. Okay. Okay, so they've gone straight into banking, which I'm quite interested to see. The banking industry is known for its large UX teams, probably more UX than they require, yet it lags when it comes to design maturity. Yep, I agree. They're doing, they're churning out uh, the medium articles that's like the extent of their knowledge and you know everything they learned in the textbook so I'm not like I'm not convinced that they're doing like groundbreaking work and that the, the design thinking is there these aren't dumb people I mean and they're doing work that I think like most traditional design thinkers and like more designers I don't like that term design thinking but yeah I think most designers would probably like think differently and so on and and there's a maturity that is definitely there and the UX team are so busy throwing around methodologies and things like that they really ever really do what they should be doing you know now I've worked with some amazing UXs and the ones I love the most the ones that like get stuff done they're quick they're fast they understand what that situation calls for they don't waste their time going through all the processes and all the everything like textbook style they've figured out like what does that situation need and those are those are real problem solvers so i find there's more textbook uxs than there are real problem solvers and real there's really any real innovative uxs hmm. okay so what else Okay, so yeah, they, they've said, so maybe I'm starting to understand the strategy a little bit better. They said, this is a prime example of how investing in resources has diminished effects without incorporating design into business strategy overall. So yeah, they, they're still not getting a seat at the table. They are producing and they are doing what everyone says, which is, you know, the banks, you know, CEOs of the bank will stand there and go, we are customer centric. And uh, the user experience is important to us. But they're not actually listening to like people that have got the view, the customer lens on, aren't sitting at the table going for the next five years. We believe our customers would benefit from this outside of some very rigid and hard data that's being fed to them and some rigid and hard business minded thinking rather than design thinking around problems so, so they've said uh, level one i mean it's like banking financial average so yeah every everything outside of percentages have been rounded or may not inquire okay so there seem to be a lot of banking kind of in the level one thing very little in the level five which i think the bank that can get to level five that is purely design thinking i mean i'd love that uh, if i had the resources maybe i should start a patreon thing where i'm going to reinvent banking from a designer's point of view how's that for a challenge let me know in the comments if you would uh, support me changing banking with a designer lens on Okay, so now we've got entertainment. Entertainment and media skew less mature than the average overall. Still the number of level four companies is over 50% higher than average. 
what might this mean? While most entertainment and media companies are hewing to outdated design approaches, yeah. Okay, so they're doing a lot of traditional stuff and the most they're doing is like AB and beat testing and stuff like that. Okay, so yeah, I must say, I don't think the entertainment do, industry is doing a huge amount of stuff. I obviously see Netflix, for example, and I go, they've started doing something like interactive storytelling. And I think they did it with Black Mirror. And I think that's pretty incredible. Like I'm, I'm quite excited by that. But it's nothing more than, there used to be a company called uh, North Kingdom. And North Kingdom used to do these amazing, like, storytelling things. Was, it's not really transmedia storytelling because that would be more the Batman campaign. But, uh, yeah, the North Kingdom did these great, like, gamified kind of promotions to get you to kind of sign up and engage with them and enjoy some experiences with them and release products. And I think kind of entertainment industry should be doing that i think interactive tv i've got a feeling that like it's going to pick up i think like right now they you know or you get to decide the outcome like on your tv but like at what point does the majority rule happen inside of a cinema or you know the pokemon type thing of you know how do we get people to engage with our movies and whatever outside of the theater or on the screen like you know can you find like a jumanji movie if you had to find certain things you know do they create an app and you run around and it makes you like immerse yourself into that imanji jumanji 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 i don't know mindset um so like I don't know. I don't know that they're doing anything. And then also, you know, just as a product, you know, has anybody made a super movie thing? I think people, I've seen some great ideas. Um, I've not seen a lot of augmented reality, which is what I'm talking about with the, like, Pokemon type of gaming thing. So that would be nice. Do you have any professional services and consulting? Okay, so this is a lot here. I'm not going to be able to go through all of that. Okay, so they've got then like the different types of uh, company sizes, the maturity by company size. And, you know, they've got micro, which is fewer than 10 employees, S small business, uh, which is small to medium business, SMB, 10 to 99. Then they've got mid market, which is 100 to 999 and then large enterprises which is a thousand plus i worked in a thirty thousand plus bank and i have to agree a little bit i'm surprised that there's so many banks though that are on level one with nearly half the banks still on level one which i suppose you could look at as opportunity as a designer because i mean i would be starting i've done level three I want to be at level four and five. Interesting. Okay. And they've got like a region thing. And I, this is kind of a little bit weird because they push like Europe and the Middle East and Africa all into one like thing. And I think that's like a little bit falsely represented. So I'm not even going to go into that because I mean, Europe on its own could be doing amazing stuff while Africa is doing nothing and then it could just skew the percentages. So, and I don't know that like the Middle East are huge like product focused guys. I mean, they, they don't have that type of business. I don't know. I, I, I'd love to learn their market because I mean, they've got oil. They've got oil and now they're one of the best places in the world to go as tourist. You know, they beautifully positioned to kind of go anywhere in the world so yeah I like the Middle East I want to go back New Year's Middle East 2019 I will be there for 2020 okay 
Okay, so now they, I mean, that's pretty much looks like the end. They go into an appendix, um, which is interesting. That's what people, practices, so on. So yeah, I mean, this is an interesting report. I'd encourage you to read it. Uh, try and make sense of it yourself. You don't have to wear these amazing Envision socks to read this, but uh, I think that it's certainly worth going through to understand, to see opportunity, I guess. But yeah, thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, leave a comment, and stay cool. Wow, so if you stayed till the end of that video, then uh, maybe this does work. But uh, I'd love to hear from you if you could let me know like, what you thought of this video in this long format, this commentary style, whether you appreciate it, if it works for Friday Finds, if it'll work for all videos or just this video. But I'd love to know. Thanks.